The most recent episode of Hell of a Boss introduced us to Beelzebub, who, like Osmodius, appears to not just be one of the Seven Princes, but also one of the kings in the Ars Goetia, with Beelzebub's seal seeming to prove it. With all that in mind, today we're going to talk about how this shakes up the hierarchy of Hell now that it appears to be definitive and not just speculative. Right now, there are two distinct forms of royalty in Hell, however many others could exist, and I'd love to do a video on that, so if that's something you want, let me know real quick in the comments down below. The first royal we learned of through Hasbin Hotel was Lucifer, who serves as king of all of Hell. In episode 2 of Hell of a Boss, we saw the characters go to a theme park, Lululand, in a place with a green sky, which seemed unnatural compared to the rest of Hell we had seen with its red sky. Through tweets after the episode from the official Hell of a Boss account, we learned that this was the Greed Ring, a different layer of Hell than the Red Sky of the Pride Ring, where the Sinners were kept. With there being seven rings, with us seeing Pride and Greed so far, it became obvious that these were based off of the Seven Deadly Sins. I don't imagine that these rings and their princes were thought up when Hasbin Hotel's pilot was being worked on, with Hasbin Hotel focusing largely on the conflict of Sinners and their overlords in the Pride Ring. Hell of a Boss seemed designed to avoid showing us anything particularly new about the Pride Ring, saving all of those twists and turns for the plot of Hasbin Hotel. By creating six more Rings of Hell, Vivzipop created six new worlds to explore with their own royalty and native species. This didn't just preserve the plot of Hasbin Hotel, but expanded on it as well by having Lucifer maintained as the King of Hell. Each ring is ruled over by a demon prince that represents one of the seven deadly sins, based off of the real-life Peter Binsfeld classification of demons from the 1500s. Peter Binsfeld was a theologian who tortured supposed witches and claimed that this hierarchy is what he was able to extract from his victims in regards to who they worship. It's actually just a minor rewriting of a previous hierarchy called the Lantern of Light, however, which features mostly the same demons, but with some of their positions swapped. Lucifer, of course, rules the Pride Ring, the top ring with its red sky. Just below that is Wrath, which is ruled by Satan. We haven't seen Satan, but his workout app indicates that he looks a bit like a dragon and a bit like how the imps look, mostly red and with horns. Just below Wrath with its orange sky would be the gluttony ring ruled by Beelzebub, who we saw in this most recent episode, though it is meant to take place at the end of Season 1 before the story of Season 2. Beelzebub is a complex character design-wise, with a lot of different inspirations. Because of the bee in Beelzebub, most fans expected some sort of bee theme to her, and the gluttony ring is of course covered in beehive architecture as a result. Beelzebub is an ancient word with no reference to bees, of course, and instead actually translates to Lord of the Flies. Because of this, the bee theme Beelzebub has seems to be a bit of a disguise, with her having two wings like a common fly, instead of four wings like an actual bee. She is of course also a fox, as opposed to a hellhound, which opens up a large network of possibilities for other furry species that could be native to the gluttony ring, but perhaps in smaller tribes than that of the hellhounds. Click up here in the corner to watch yesterday's video and hear more about that. Below this is the greed ring with its green sky, where we haven't seen Mammon the prince himself, but he is printed on the money of hell, and we did see the silhouette of him from the hell of a boss twitter. His depiction on the money seems a lot more slim than he appears in this actual silhouette of him, which makes me think that he's purposely slimming himself down to disguise how he actually looks in person. Like Beelzebub potentially hiding her fly-like aspects, this may be something Mammon does in order to hide who he really is and get more popularity in Hell. Below Greed is of course Osmodius as the ruler of the Lust Ring that we met in Episode 7, technically one episode before Beelzebub. Below that would be Envy, a place we haven't seen, ruled by Leviathan, a prince we haven't met, followed by the final ring of Sloth with its pink sky, ruled by Belphegor, who we haven't met either. Beelzebub's design was also said to be influenced by the idea that the Seven Rings of Hell are Seven Circus Rings. As the King of Hell, Lucifer is dressed like a circus ringleader, and the other princes, according to Vivzipop on Twitter, are meant to represent different circus acts. Vivzipop explains that Beelzebub represents the animal shows, with her jumping through hoops in her performance. It becomes obvious that Satan will represent the sort of strongman act you'd see at the circus, what with his workout app on Blitz's phone, and Beelzebub gushing about how good he looks without his shirt on. Asmodeus, with his army of sexy strippers, represents circus dancers. Mammon is literally a jester and plays so hard into the circus theme that he is directly ripping off Lucifer in doing so at his theme park, Lululand, which is a ripoff of Lucifer's more popular Lulu World in the Pride Ring. 
Leviathan with a sea theme will probably be involved in some sort of water acrobatics or water animal shows, which are apparently a thing at some old circuses, but I'm not sure how Belphegor will fit into that quite yet. Now in Hell of a Boss, there are of course a second form of nobility introduced through Stolas, which is the Ars Goetia. The Ars Goetia is a list of 72 demons in a hierarchy with seven positions of power within it. At the top are kings like Paimon, who are indicated to have several children in the hierarchy, who are all prearranged to marry others within the Goetia tribe, but not in their direct bloodline in order to maintain their system. Below kings are the dukes, who we have not met yet, then princes like Stolas himself. Below that are the marquis, such as Andreelfis. The territory of the seven princes is based around the obvious geography of the seven rings, which are stacked on top of each other and traveled through largely with the help of a giant elevator system. The Ars Goetia, on the other hand, are not explicitly explained, but seem to serve these seven princes. Paimon is said to be the most loyal of the demons to Lucifer in his real-life depiction, so it's possible that the seven princes are more focused on ruling over their native rings, with the Ars Goetia focusing on things like conquering the Earth, and particularly ruling over the Pride Ring. Right now, we see that Stolas lives in the Pride Ring in Imp City, which is called the Second Circle of Hell on some of its signs. This is a reference to the works of Dante, where he describes nine circles of hell, different from the seven rings of hell stacked on top of each other here in the show. The nine circles, instead, seem to be nine cities in the Pride Ring, with the first circle being the location under the literal circle of the pentagram that hangs over Pentagram City. Not the weird dark star that hangs over all of hell, but the actual little pentagram that Cherry Bomb and Serpentius are fighting for the territory under in the has -been Hotel pilot. I imagine that the Ars Goetia are not spread around the Seven Rings of Hell, but instead are mostly centered around these nine circles in the Pride Ring. In addition to Stolas, we also saw that Andrealfis lives in the Pride Ring. His location, like him, is rather icy, which fits the description of the Ninth Circle of Hell in Dante's writings. We also see other Goetia just hanging out in the Pride Ring casually at the same rich person's coffee shop as Andrealfis, Stella, and Stolas, so it really does seem like the Goetia as a rule live in the Pride Ring. Even if we know they have business all over Hell, like with Stolas going to the Wrath Ring to curse the crops for the Harvest Moon Festival. I keep saying mostly with the Ars Goetia because as most of you know, Osmodius, the Prince of Lust, is also a king in the Ars Goetia. Now, in the real-life writings, this wasn't a purposeful choice. The Ars Goetia and Peter Binsfield classifications were written hundreds of years apart without any real reference to each other. In the Seven Princes, Asmodeus is simply labeled a prince, but in the Ars Goetia, he is a king, meaning he is closer in power to Stolas' father Paimon than to him. The Seven Princes, with their prince title, seem to outrank the kings in the Ars Goetia in some way, so Asmodeus' title as a prince is likely more important than his title as a king in the Ars Goetia, though both are of course of great importance. Each member of the Ars Goetia has a summoning seal that can be found in the real-life Lesser Key of Solomon, where they are described. Stolas' castle is decorated with his own seal, which was used in Episode 6 to summon him in the human world when drawn on the floor with blood. Osmodius' seal has also been seen, even on the thumbnail for his premiere episode, Season 1, Episode 7. Episode 8 followed this pattern by having a seal with Beelzebub's name, which was also featured on a wall behind her when she was performing in the episode. However, this seal, despite the name of Beelzebub around it, is actually the seal for Baal in the Ars Goetia, who, like Paimon and Osmodius, is a king. I have long had the theory that Beelzebub and Baal are the same character in Hell of a Boss, as like with Osmodius, it would give the hierarchies another really fun connection between the two, but it wasn't until a fan pointed out that Beelzebub's seal was the same as Baal's that it finally confirmed that she was a Goetia. Baal was an ancient word used for the chief deity of several mythologies. Baal means lord, so Beelzebub, or Baalzebub, meant lord of the flies, a term used to insult the people worshipping Baal. Baal and Beelzebub would later each be imagined as different demons in these hierarchies based off of the separate writings where different names were used, but it's very fun and clever for Vivzipop to connect them as the same character here in the Helliverse. This is particularly interesting, however, as Beelzebub doesn't have any bird theme to her, something even Osmodius has while incorporating his other design elements. However, we've discussed before that the bird theme is really a choice to branch off of Stolas' design, who is described as an owl in the real-life writings. While some other demons like Andrealfis may also be a bird in their writings, such as a peacock, most of the Ars Goetia were not bird-based demons, and different lines of family within the Goetia may be entirely different species. 
Paimon himself is seen to take on several forms before becoming the Owl Dad to Stola, so who knows what other species there may be, even within his line. And Beelzebub as Ball in the Goetia may be their own long line of furry species that exists alongside the birds we see at the Goetia events. But what do you guys think? Let me know your theories in the comments down below, and if you want a video breaking down the possible other hierarchies of hell, sound off in the comments and we'll try to make that happen. See you guys next time.